Hey, what's up guys? We're back in the shop today with my car. Uh, today we're going to be going over the install of a Holley Terminator X Max system. Um, I removed my Mega Squirt from my car already. This used to have a Mega Squirt 3X on it. Uh, when I first built this car, the Holley wasn't available yet and I wanted a really uh, tunable solution. I had used the Mega Squirt in the past and it worked great. Um, but the way we've got these cars developed now with the drive-by wire, uh, and the AC, the can adapter box, and all the new stuff that comes with a Holly, it's just a, a better option. So I picked up a kit and we're gonna show you how to wire it fully into the car. Uh, this is a subject a lot of people are kind of scared of on these cars, but realistically the wiring is extremely easy. So once you have the LS in the car and you have the DME removed, 95% of the wiring that you'll need to do is going to happen in this DME box. I'm actually missing the box, but all the harness that's left here is the only thing that you're going to need to wire to. Um, other than that, you'll have some pumps and power and some grounds, and we're going to go over everything in, de in detail today. All right, so one of the first things I wanted to go over with the Holly Terminator X system is just a general overview of which ECU you need for this BMW swap. Um, since we're gonna be using the drive-by wire option on this, because it's the simplest way to go, because you can take advantage of the stock BMW pedal, you're automatically narrowing it down to an X-Max. So the X-Max has the ability to run drive-by wire as well as control uh, 4L60 and 4L80 automatic transmissions. So the first thing you need to do when you're figuring out which Holly part number you need to order is you need to know whether or not you're gonna have a 24X reluctor wheel on your engine or a 58X reluctor wheel on your engine. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to know is if you're gonna run an automatic transmission and then which type of fuel injector connector you need. Basically, all you need to know to pick out which uh, kit to buy, a lot of people have confusion with this, but the easiest way to do it, just go to Holly's website, go down here to LS kits and here we automatically know we're not going to use an X we're going to be using an X max because we need drive by wire so you got an X max and you just go over here and hit narrow results narrow it out by crank reluctor and my kit that's on the ground this is a 24x so right there it breaks it down in all the 24x kits then terminator options I'm going to be running drive by wire and transmission so it's right there that breaks it down to only three more choices. So now we have a kit that has multi-tech connectors, EV6 connectors, or EV1 connectors. So this kit right here with the EV6 connectors is essentially what I have on the ground. It's not real hard to find out uh, which kit you need. You just need to use their narrow search tool and then you get your part number and that's the easiest way to find the kit you need. So the way these kits are set up, they're pretty modular. So in that example, I got the X-Max kit and it's going to come with a main harness that's set up for 24X. A 24X engine, if you lay this harness out kind of like it's on the motor, you're going to have your crank wire, it's going to go down to the passenger side of the engine right above the starter, and then your cam on a 24X motor is at the back. So it's a short plug, it sits at the back of the motor right back here at the back of the heads plugs in right in the back of the valley cover if you have a 58x motor this cam wire is a lot further up the harness up on this end so every kit you're going to have has this main harness even though you have drive by wire you're still going to have a tps plug uh, idle air controller plug up at this end of the harness we're not going to use these since we have a drive-by-wire option, but they're still going to be there. So you can either deep pin them or just tuck them out of the way, zip tie them out of the way, something like that. The drive-by-wire harness looks like this. Plugs into the holly. Then it has a plug for a GM throttle body. And then it normally has a plug for a GM pedal. 
What we're gonna do later is show you how you're gonna wire this up into the BMW at the DME box to use the BMW pedal. There's two different drive-by wire harnesses. Um, there's an early and a late model throttle body. One is an eight pin that's here. And one is a six pin. Which the connector looks like this. So I picked up this kit second hand and it has the wrong end on it. So we're gonna go ahead and swap these out. We're gonna swap these connectors out and I'll provide links uh, in the description or we'll drop a screenshot of the wiring diagrams that's on Holly's site that shows you how to do this. But basically the eight pin, as you can see right here, the red and the black wires are just split off. So there's two voltage wires and two ground wires in here. Whereas on the six pin, there's only one there's a red and a black only one pair of red and black so it's pretty easy to rewire this connector if you need to you just need to take care when you're doing it because obviously this controls your pedal so properly solder it properly heat strain kit strain relief if this breaks your pedal will either get stuck or doesn't work so you want to take care when doing this the other part of the harness that we have since we're going to be doing a 4L80 in this car is the transmission harness it looks like this this end plugs into the holly. Then on this end, we have our two speed sensors on an 80, input and, out, input and output shaft speed, and then the transmission connector. So that's a basic overview of the parts you're gonna get and how to pick out which kit you need. It's not that complicated. You just need to narrow it down between which reluctor you have and then the options. So the next thing I wanna go over is finding the wiring diagrams for these cars. Um, luckily, there's a website called newtis.info and you can go in here and go to three series, scroll down to an E90 in my case, 325 sedan. And you can pretty easily just use this search function up here. Like I'm gonna type accelerator search so if you were looking up something to find the accelerator pedal you can see a functional description of the accelerator pedal module say you wanted to find a pinout or something like that all of that information's here what we're interested in are wiring diagrams so the wiring diagrams show you everything you need to know about the drive-by wire system so this is going to be the six wires we're going to be interested in uh, to wire a drive-by wire that we'll go through later but just so you guys know if you haven't used this already everything as far as wiring is here it's a little hard to find what you need and all these color um, abbreviations are in German so you need to do a little translating but you can use the colors pretty easily and find what you need so first things first you got the LS sitting in your BMW and you're ready to take this Holly kit and wire it into there. If you know what you're doing and you have everything set up, this should take you no more than an hour or two uh, to throw it together, check everything out, get it running. Another hour or two to clean everything up, make it look nice, but the wiring should not be the daunting part of the swap whatsoever. So I had the MS3 on my car, I already pulled it off. I went ahead and swapped intake manifolds because I had a drive-by cable LS1 set up on it previously. So since we're going with the Holly, I swapped to a four bolt manifold and this is a cheap well performing option it's kind of ugly but it works so this is a trailblazer ss or a new new body style intake um, it's still a cathedral port and it's a four bolt style so i have a ls3 gold blade throttle body on here and it has a six pin connector that we were talking about earlier we'll go through that so as you saw in the other videos you basically rip out your entire bmw harness the only thing you're left with is what's in the DME box. Mine's already been cut apart a little bit, but basically this is the only harness that's left. You have a few different colored connectors and depending on the year and the model of these cars, it seems like BMW like to change up a lot of this. We're gonna go through these one at a time and show you where to find the key on ignition power, the drive-by wire, the fan control, 
Uh, we're going to talk about the reverse lights and that should be basically everything you need to get the car running. Your constant power, luckily we have a stud right here. We got constant power and ground, it's easily accessible. You can ground off one of the strut bolts, that works well too. Um, but we're going to take the Holly harness and show you what to do first and then we'll get to the wiring. All right, so we got everything laid out here on the ground. Since these harnesses are all separate, what I like to do is plug everything into ECU first, outside of the car. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So that's the main harness, plugs in there. Transmission harness plugs in. You can't plug these in wrong, they're keyed differently, so if you try to plug it in here, it won't go. So this is the transmission harness. And then our car has the drive-by wire harness. Again, it's keyed, so you can't plug it in wrong. One thing you want to check on here before you plug it in, these little white keys are what snap all the pins in. And the only troubles I've ever had with these harnesses is sometimes in shipping or when they get put together, they don't make sure these tabs are locked. So what you want to do is make sure all the wires are plugged in and these white plugs are flush. Otherwise, these pins can back out and you'll have a loose connection. So check that before you plug them in. So, and then we have our main power harness. This one's been cut short. I'll show you where we're going to wire it to, but this comes with like 10 feet of wire. And Holly suggests you run this straight to your uh, battery not to a stud or anything like that, straight to a battery. In these cars, the battery is essentially in the front because it's mounted in the trunk, but there's a main power wire that goes up front to a terminal block. So by hooking this to that terminal block, it's essentially directly to the battery. So plug that in as well. So that's the Holly harness all the way plugged in. This blue wire here is an internal one bar map sensor. Um, if you're running an NA car, you can hook this up to a vacuum line. Um, if you're going to be running boost, you're going to be running an external map sensor. Um, then you can leave this unplugged. So the reason I like to plug all this stuff in is because you will see some of these harnesses have some extra wires and that's what we need to wire up. So off the main harness, first thing you're going to run into here is a black wire and a red white wire then a little further down the harness you're gonna have a little bundle and in here is a red wire a green wire and a blue white wire so what I like to do is take apart this harness a little bit and run all these wires up to the same spot you can either extend these and run them down to here or vice versa but essentially what we're going to have is ground, ignition power, and then this red is a constant power. The green is used for a fuel pump, and the blue, I have to look up, I forget, but we're going to pull up the, the, the instructions and show you guys exactly what to look for. Then on the transmission harness, which is this one, similar configuration, we have a black, a red, a red, white, and a gray. So we'll pull up the instructions and show you where those are gonna go, but essentially it follows the same wiring colors as this one. Then on the drive-by wire harness, there's a single wire, uh, and this is a red, white wire that matches these. But you, this is actually supposed to be a brake wire. So it's a safety function built in, so if you press the brakes, the system has a minimum uh, TPS that it allows. So if you have a failure, of a pedal position sensor or a throttle body. If you press the brakes, it basically closes the throttle body. Um, Holly tells you the wire to sub for safety um, to hook it to the brake pedal. But the problem with that is you're gonna have limited throttle that's available. So we're gonna talk about a few different ways if you wanna hook this up, which you can do. Um, one is to hook it to the e-brake. So you can put a micro switch on the e-brake. So if you hit that, the limited throttle in case of emergency um, or things like that. The main power harness, this little short one, it's got a black and a red, and these are constant. This is going to be to the battery, power, and ground. There's a fuse built in here, fuse built in here, fuse built in here. So basically the main power that's coming into the harnesses, 
on the red wires gets triggered by the red white wire as ignition and each of these has a relay that powers everything so there's a relay for transmission main harness and then the main fuse on that harness so what we're going to do now is get everything kind of bundled together and we'll start routing the ecu where we want it to go so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to take this bundle of wires and i'm going to route it back up to the harness up to this area that's going to be in the dme box all right so now we have our black our red white our red our green and our blue all right next to each other right next to the can connector and the main fuse and relay So then the next thing we need to do is we're basically going to tie this harness all together here in one kind of bundle because we're going to run this in the car in the glove box. So I want to kind of tuck all this to stuff together and we're going to terminate all the matching colors other than on this drive by wire harness together. So I can have one location where I'm gonna have all the wires coming out of the harness. I can make all my connections in one spot. I like to do this outside of the car so I can kind of make this one bundle before I put it in the car. And then it's a lot easier to route. So I'm gonna extend these wires down a little bit just to get them to come out closer to this one. All right, so. Got those wires extended down the harness about the same length as the main harness. Still have a brake wire up there. So what we're gonna do now is kind of bundle everything together. So this is gonna be going through the firewall. So we want to try to make this kind of a tight of a bundle as possible. Don't cover up your fuses. You had some big loom you could loom this all or tape it together since it's all already loomed but uh, right now i'm just trying to hold everything we'll go back and cover this in one piece of loom when we're done it's easier to hold it like this for now so we've got our fuses our relays there Now we've got this thing kind of looking like more one unit. So at this point, all the wires you need to hook up, you can have all in one spot. That just makes things a lot easier in my opinion on our main power wires. So once we have it like that, we're gonna go ahead and start trying to route it into the car. Now that I have everything tied together, I'm gonna to disconnect this, feed this through the harness, or feed the harness through the firewall, um, because in these cars, you can either run the PCU itself inside the DME box, or if you pull out the fan that used to cool the DME box, you get a nice hole in the firewall, and you can put a big grommet in and you can run everything into the glove box and then mount the terminator in the glove box. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get this started in this box. Then I gotta go inside and kind of pull this from there, get everything situated into the engine bay. And then once it's through the firewall, I can start laying this harness on the engine like it was supposed to be, and we can get everything tucked away neatly. So I'm gonna get that pulled through right now. So since this was a used harness, I'm gonna go ahead and add some wire back on these main power connectors since I don't know where they had this hooked up before but I'm gonna need a little more wire on here before I shove this all the way through all right now that we've got most of the wires shoved in here all of our wires that we rerouted now 
are still right here accessible so these are a little bit short because they've been installed before normally they'd be just as long as this but this should be fine so everything we need to hook up is in this box right here got a couple of relays a couple of fuses laying in here and we got the stock pmw wiring which we'll get to but now what we're going to do is take this harness and start routing it onto the engine where it's going to go and get it cleaned up so the easiest way to start doing this is start laying the main harness out and it's going to split down the passenger side and the driver side as far as the um, coil connectors and then everything for the drive-by cable throttle body will up, be up the passenger side which we won't be using but it'll help you get everything laid out and then we can plug in our injector connector which goes right here and then start laying those out on here as well all right i thought this might be easier to see without my intake manifold on so i went ahead and took that off um, so the main harness we need to go ahead and put this piece of loom back on first so let's do that real quick all right we put that back together so you take the main harness section this is a large bundle it's going to go across the engine here are two terminated plugs so this is what they call a power tap this four pin connector it comes with a ground a 12 volt a 5 volt and a, a ground reference on there so that's useful for wiring up pressure sensors um, if you're going to buy an aftermarket uh, flex fuel kit uh, like the one that matt sells from sloppy mechanics he's got one that plugs right into here uh, that'll also have an input for your flex fuel sensor and he has one version that works with an alternator and a flex fuel sensor um, highly recommended easy way to do it um, this is your input plug you get your four inputs and your four outputs on here so basically this harness is going to live right around here our injector connector actually more of this harness is going to go this way something more like that so what you'll have is down the driver's side, you'll have your odd ignition. So I'm gonna plug this in to my coils. And then my even ignition is on the other side of the harness. Even ignition over here. So that'll kind of give you a basic starting point of where to start routing this harness because everything is symmetric left to right on here. Um, and like I said before, all this stuff up on the driver's side will be here so you can start routing this stuff neatly and see where the harness needs to land so as you can see we have a lot of extra harness still but basically all this harness will be in the dme box all neatly wound up if you still have the actual box it all will seal you can use the oem connector and cut the boot apart and run this through the boot um, so we'll start plugging some more stuff in and we'll see where this harness starts landing so we have our oil pressure sensor. If you have a Gen 3 block like I do, it's right at the back of the block. You need to get a three pin oil pressure sensor. You can either buy the Holly sensor or use like a late model truck one. So that's here. Our cam sensor is at the back. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. This stuff's a lot easier to get to without the intake on. Amp sensors plugged in. Now one really important thing are these grounds. There's two ground wires here. Connect to cylinder head only. So this is the grounds for the coils. You need to ground this to the back of the head or the back of the block. The head's the best way. There's a threaded uh, M10 holes on the back of them that would be used for accessories if the heads were flipped. Go ahead and ground these now before you forget about them. If you don't ground these, all sorts of weird stuff's gonna happen. You'll have misfires, coils won't work, things like that. So go ahead and ground those to the heads. The crank sensor, this insulated wire, is gonna get routed down behind the passenger side head, down towards the crank sensor by the starter. Get my alternator wire out of the way right now, because this stuff will be routed later. This big plug is for your wideband. This is gonna, most of the time, over on this side, depending on where your exhaust is, but I'm gonna keep it in the DME box for now. When we plug in my O2 sensor, 
it's going to go right here. This is the plug for the injectors. Um, the injectors are a sub harness, so if you need to change um, the type of connector, you can either just buy this whole harness that plugs into here and swap it, or just get adapters for the end of the harness. Basically, that's the way that all is going to land for now until I get my intake on. We're going to go ahead and put those grounds on the back of the head before I forget about them. So you can hook these block grounds right to one of the studs on the back of the head or one of the one of the holes on the back of the head. Knock sensors we're not going to use on here but if you were this would plug in right in the sub harness that goes in the gen 3 knock sensors. If you have a gen 4 harness or a 58x harness the knock sensor plugs are down below on the driver and passenger side of the block right above the oil pan. It's our injector harness. So this is going to get plugged in right at the right here. So plug our injectors in. And then this harness is going to split driver side and passenger side. And there's a few there's a few different revisions of this harness. Some are labeled right at the injector, like this one. It says injector six, injector eight. So we know this is the even side and the odd side. So this is going to get split back behind the harness. But for now, until I get my intake on, I'm going to just kind of leave it tucked up like this so it's not in the way while I'm putting the intake on. And then we'll tuck that away and plug it into the injectors. The front side of the harness up here, we have manifold air temperature. In my case, it's routed down here. So I'll plug that in in a second. Coolant temperature sensor, typical place on the driver's side of the head, right down here. That's plugged in. Then we have fuel. That is for a fuel pressure sensor, which we will plug into our fuel pressure regulator there once we get it mounted. Idle air control and TPS. So these two, since we're drive by wire, won't be used. So they're just gonna get tied away and hidden. So we're gonna hook up the fuel and hook up the air temperature once that sensor's in. So that takes care of that side of the engine. So the only thing left we have to plug in is the injectors and the crank sensor. All right, now we have the transmission part of the harness. Um, since this car is still a power glide right now, um, it's going to be going to a 480. I'm not going to plug this in yet, but if you were going to, you would just need to route it down over the driver's side area of the bell housing to plug in on a 480 on the driver's side or on a 60, it's on the passenger side. And the drive-by wire harness are these two shielded cables still. So we have the one that's going to plug into the throttle body. This thing is really long, so I'd like to just wrap up the excess wire in the DME box. So that'll be wound up in here. And then this is gonna plug into the throttle body. And the other side of this, which would typically go inside the car all the way over and plug into the pedal, this is gonna get cut off. Even though Holly says, do not cut or modify. We're going to go ahead and cut or modify this. So once we get some of these other wires out of your way, here on the harness from the BMW, we have everything we need for drive-by wire here, which would be on the connector that used to go to the DME. Um, I'll post a screenshot of that connector number so you can find it, find it on the website. Um, but you can pull it up and find the six wires basically it's a pair of yellows a pair of blues and a pair of browns um, on this car here i can show you a site so if we went back to new tis accelerator pedal we're going to find this diagram here so on the dme control unit there's these four wires and then on the DME control unit here, there's these two wires. So these two and these four are the six that we have broken out over there. So you have a yellow green and a yellow, a brown and a brown yellow, and a white yellow and a white. 
So I'm gonna post a screenshot to the wiring diagram. It's gonna go for this for the Holly connector. Basically these six wires are what's gonna get connected to the six wires on the Holly pedal plug. And the drive-by wire is essentially done just by hooking that up. So what we're gonna do with the drive-by wire section that used to go to the pedal, it's already cut off on here. We're gonna cut this short because it's gonna be terminated right here in the DME box. So there's four wires in here. I'm gonna go ahead and strip this back. This is a shielded cable, so I'm not gonna rip anything. Okay, strip this back. And you have a yellow, a blue, an orange, and a black. So I'm going to post a screenshot on which wire, which of these were, are going to connect to the six wires that got broken out here that I showed you on new TIS. So the yellows, the whites, and the browns, we're going to connect to these four, and two of them get paired up. So I'm going to do that now. All right, so the next thing we need to find is the key on ignition wire. On the Holly side, all of the red with yellow stripes are gonna get tied to a key on ignition power. So we have the one off the main harness, and then we have the one off the transmission harness. And this transmission one is the one that's a little short, but it's long enough to connect to. So where you're gonna find the key on ignition wire on the BMW side is on the same connector right here. You should have one connector that has six wires. It's gonna have a large gauge, either black or white wire. And this is actually the start wire right here. Um, and this same connector is gonna have the key on ignition wire, which in my case, I've already had connected. You can see it was cut off right here. It's a green white wire. So it's this one right here. So I'm gonna take this green white wire and I'm gonna connect it to the Holly side. Um, red whites. All right, so we got the two red whites to the uh, BMW green white there. All right, so the next thing we got here, we took our two black wires that come from the main harness and the transmission harness, terminated those together at a, at a uh, lug, and then our main powers and the two powers from down there to solid red wires we terminated together. So now we have a power and ground wire we need to hook up and just this ground to which will go to the same spot. Um, and right on the outside of the DME box there conveniently is a stud right here where you can hook up constant power. And then there's a ground stud down here. Mine's really hard to get to because the downpipe's in the way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this stud right here on the top of the strut. There, those powers and grounds hooked up now. The yeah, meat box gets any more cold, cluttered than it already is. Um, I wanted to point out a couple more wires that's remaining on the BMW side. So on this same connector that had your key on ignition wire, I mentioned before, the heavy gauge wire, either the black or the white, depending on the year of your car and the model. Um, this is the start wire. So this can get cut off and run down to the starter solenoid which is the small eight millimeter stud on the BMW starter, or excuse me, on the LS starter. Um, then we'll have to jump the wire inside the car at the gas. Um, so we'll have a clutch switch. So your starter wire is on this blue connector stud. Um, this wire will get run down to the LS starter on the small eight millimeter stud and you'll have to modify the cast wires as we talked about in one of the other uh, swap series videos. Um, we will have to jump, jump to the pins on the cast uh, for this wire to work off the start button. Um, the other things you're gonna have to terminate, which we've already mentioned before, um, if the car wasn't automatic, you're gonna have a connector with two pairs of red and blue can wires. These have to be terminated together. These ones are already tied together on my car from previous 
um, but you'll need to do that. Um, the brake wire, which is the gray wire on the Holly side on the 4080 harness, needs to be tied into to a 12 volt wire when you press the brakes, basically a brake light. What that's gonna do is unlock the torque converter when you uh, press the brakes. So again, on uh, new TIS, um, you can find the brake wire that's on that same DME connector. Like everything you need is on that DME connector as well as the fan speed control. So once we get to the fan speed, I'll show you which wire that is and how to find it. The next thing we want to talk about is what to do with the alternator. So on an earlier style four pin GM alternator, it's gonna have a connector looks like this. Uh, you have a few options here as far as getting this thing to charge. Um, if you don't do anything, um, it'll just sit there, not charge. You only have like 12 volts battery power while it's running and it's gonna die. So what you need to do is either make yourself um, a charge wire. Basically, there is one pin on here um, you can see here, if you're looking at the side with the tang, it's the second wire from the left. Got one pin in there. And I have a 470 ohm uh, half watt resistor wired in line with this connector on this pin um, connected to an ignition power wire. Uh, right now, this wire I have just run over to here into the DME box where I'm going to hook it up to the power tap wire that I talked about earlier which is buried down in here. Uh, but basically that's uh, used for either a fuel pump trigger um, off the holly, but it's nothing more than a key on 12 volt wire that's convenient to use. So if you buy one of the alternator harnesses from Matt at Sloppy Mechanics, or if you buy the holly uh, cable, which is essentially this plug, with a little piece of yellow wire on it with a 470 ohm resistor, um, you're gonna to have to connect it to 12 volt ignition power and that little power tap is the simplest way to do that. So that pretty much covers a four wire alternator. Um, if you have a later model uh, with a two wire alternator, um, those are gonna to default to around 13 and a half to 13.8 volts with nothing hooked up. Um, you can get away with running one of those and not having a charge wire, um, but you're gonna have a little lower voltage than normal because it'll be a, you know mid 13 volts or so. Um, those are also controlled via, I believe it's a negative PWM signal. So you may be able to um, trigger the two wire alternator off of a Holly output. I've never done that, but the Holly outputs are configurable, so you should be able to. But these are pretty common. I like to buy these uh, rewound, beefed up alternators. This is like a 250 amp version. It seems to charge really well, they're really cheap, so I just buy those. Um, but that'll basically cover the alternator. Next thing we're going to talk about is fuel pump. So if you have a stock car with the fuel pump still triggered on the BMW system, you can go ahead and leave that system in place if you're going to be like an NA car or, or lower power. But as soon as you start putting aftermarket fuel pumps, um, what we have found out when you remove the DME, um, the electronic pump controller seems to lose current to the fuel pumps um, at high power. So there's guys running like two Walboro 450s that were running out of fuel in like the seven to 800 horsepower range. And as soon as I rewired the fuel pumps, they weren't out of fuel anymore. So it seems like just bypassing the built-in electronic pump controller um, is the way to go. And the easiest way to do that is just to add a relay in the back seat underneath the fuel pumps and a new power wire off the battery and then use the stock wire as a trigger on a relay. Um, I had built my car before I knew anything about any of the stock stuff so I basically tore it all out. So what I'm doing is I have a two relay module here I put together. This is a little one by Little Fuse. Um, this uses micro relays so this can hold two relays, two 30 amp fuses all in one little package and I'm going to mount this over here and I'm pulling power right off the back of my alternator so I have direct high voltage off the alternator. Um, feeds into here and then I have two 12 gauge wires run back to the uh, fuel pumps in the car and I'm gonna be triggering one of these off the key on 12 volt wire over there and then one of these off a holly output uh, based on the parameters I want to like running into boost or wide open or something like that. So I'm gonna finish getting this wired up. And then this car is basically going to be ready to fire. I'll have my fuel pump set up. The holly is already ready to go. Um, got to configure the fan still. And a couple other little things, but it'll be ready to fire. I get ahead of myself and too far without recording. So I've got my 
two relay box hooked up. This has the two relays, the two fuses. I've got main power coming in, going to the back of the alternator. And then my two wires going out to my two pumps. These are these two. They head to the back of the car. Um, the primary pump I'm going to be triggering off of the green wire out of the holly harness. The green wire is a uh, 12 volt fuel pump wire. Um, in the instructions it says don't use this wire to power anything over 15 amps. I would recommend you just always go ahead and use this just to trigger a relay uh, with 12 volts. So the other side of the relay you need the ground and then this wire will go hot um, to give you fuel pump power uh, to turn on the relay to turn on your pump in the car. And then my secondary um, relay here for my second fuel pump. I have uh, a hot wire going to one side of the coil on the relay and then the other side is this purple wire and this is going to go over to tie into one of the programmable output wires on the holly. So I'm going to pick output uh, one, two, three, or four um, and set it up to be a ground trigger. That way when this wire gets grounded it'll turn on my secondary fuel pump and I can configure this in the holly system. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those two wires run over here all loomed up and then we'll jump to the next thing. So most of the wiring here, um, what we did was using the gray wires on the Holly IO uh, plug, we separated these out and what I'm running is one to my fans. So if you guys are controlling a stock BMW fan, you're gonna be able to find the fan wire on the DME connector, um, the same connector that you got the six pins for the drive-by wire. I'm going to post a picture of that up on the video right here so you can see it. Um, but you can find it on new uh, TIS as far as which pin it is for your car. In the case of my car, I had previously come over here um, and cut this small trigger wire off here. So if you look at your fan connector, you'll see the two large wires, this power and ground going to the fan, and there's a small little trigger wire. So this is the wire you feed a negative PWM signal um, to control the fan speed. Um, I tied my wire in here since I had already cut it off and I didn't have the wire going over to the DME box. Um, the other wire I tied in was a negative ground um, for my boost controller. Got to tie all this stuff up. And then also a negative ground trigger for a relay here for my nitrous. Um, I still have one um, output left. That's this gray, I believe it's the gray black wire still. Um, one more output and I still have my three inputs. Uh, or my four inputs left. I already have one routed into the car that I'm going to be using for my trans brake. Um, but these inputs, um, you can either set them up to be 12 volt or ground inputs. Um, I'm going to be setting up one of them um, to trigger my two-step when I'm on the trans brake. I'm going to have a ground wire that will enable the uh, launch control or two-step settings um, that I have configured in the Holly. So we're going to go for um, a quick little overview of some settings to go through in the computer. Um, I'm basically going to go through the handheld, um, set up a quick base map, and then get on the laptop, adjust a couple things, and try to fire this thing up. So I plugged in the handheld and I went through the base map there. There's tons of guys with videos on how to go through that setup. You basically just select your engine size, your injector, um, if you're going to be turbo, you put in some timing numbers, things like that, just to get a base map in the car. Um, I like to do that and then plug in the laptop and go over a few settings. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to change now. And then we're going to try to fire this up. So, I have my car torn apart still, but I'll turn my ignition on. Get the laptop going here. And basically what you're going to do... You're going to open up the Holly software, make sure you're connected. Connect to here. And what I'm probably going to do is include a base map for all the normal settings as far as the fan, um, the inputs from my CAN box, um, the basic stuff to get you going. You can either reference or just copy and then modify the tune for your setup. Um, one thing we're going to do on the drive-by-wire settings, we're going to go over here and go pedal versus throttle. And then since you don't have an idle screw, you have to manipulate this table for your minimum um, throttle blade angle. So I just changed this to 8% right here. Um, this will basically increase or decrease um, the amount that the blade is open at a 
zero TPS state. So it's kind of like adjusting the throttle screw on a drive-by cable throttle body. Um, the other thing you're gonna wanna look at in your idle settings, you wanna make sure that your idle type is drive-by wire set up for GM LS6 drive-by wire. Um, you always wanna double check that all your sensors are right as far as your map sensor, coolant temperature, manifold air temp, oil pressure, and I don't have a fuel pressure uh, transducer on here yet. Uh, make sure all those are correct for your settings. Um, also, in your main settings, you want to select your injector. I'm running Snake Eater 1500s in this car, so I went ahead and used that setting. Um, so, basically, once it's connected, we'll try to fire this thing up for the first time. So, I have a start button over here because this car was before we figured out how to use the uh, start button, but I'm gonna actually get this working soon. But I still have it wired up to here, so go ahead and try to fire this up. So that works out pretty well. Fired up first try. That was legit the first time I fired it up. And now I got my screen stuck. Okay, there we go. It's because I went offline. So fired real quick. I need to go and adjust some settings and then uh, adjust some fueling, but it seems like idle fueling's good. Um, we're taking this thing to the track tomorrow, so I'm either going to go make some street pulls right now and get the uh, tune dialed in, or I'm going to load it up and we're going to go to the dyno, maybe tonight. Um, but there you go. There's the Holly install for a start. First fire. Fires up. Can't beat it. Um, we'll check back in once we're uh, doing some tuning. All right, guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this Holly video. Um, there's a few things I skipped over recording the videos, but we're going to explain them in the description and put up some diagrams. Um, one of them is the starter. Um, and if you watched the first swap video, you can quickly see how we modified the wiring from the cast to the brake switch um, underneath the dash in here. Um, but as I was making some diagrams, uh, we found out that it's much easier just to do it right here in the DME box. And we'll show you in some diagrams uh, how to make those connections to make the push the start work. Um, basically, it's much easier uh, than having to get up underneath the dash to do the starter uh, modifications. The other thing we're going to have a diagram for is to show you exactly on um, the DME connector which wires you need to modify for the drive-by wire, um, where you're going to find your fan control, because as I said in my video, my fan control was done directly here, but rather than running a wire over here, you can do it right at that DME connector. One other thing we'll uh, elaborate on in the diagrams on the website is the key on ignition wire. Um, I showed you where to find um, the key on ignition wire in a base model or an E90 with that green uh, white wire here in the DME box. Um, we found out that the E92s are a little bit different and you may have to get a ignition wire from inside the cab, uh, but we'll discuss that and post some more diagrams on the website about that. Last thing everybody's been asking about, my can conversion boxes. These will finally be available come the end of October, uh, the beginning of November. All the parts are on the way. I have a few of these in stock now. But I got to take care of a bunch of guys that I've already promised them to, but basically this is it. 
little box. It's gonna have a six pin Deutsch connector on it. This is our early version, so it's a little crooked, but this one's in my car. You get a harness here. It's got a Deutsch connector. And then on the other end, has two Holly connectors. There's a female to plug into the Holly harness and then a male to go out to either your four inch screen or your tuning cable. And there's another wire here you just tie into your PT can wires. So two wires hook up into the PT can in the DME box. Plug this into here. Kind of hard to do one handed. A little Deutsch connector plugs right in. Then you got your two Holly connectors here. Plug this one into this wire right down here. Holly is down, buried in the DME box. I'll try to do this one handed without turning the camera off. So this male connector plugs into the Holly. And that's it. So that'll get your tack functioning, your front and rear wheel speed inputs to holly over can without burning up any inputs gets your ac button in the interior of the car as an input to the holly over can and also if you have a 335i cluster with an oil temp gauge it converts that to coolant temperature so we'll have more details about that on the website and those are going to be available here real soon